Now, another function that's, you know, that's not necessarily part of asset management, but that we do allow you to view in, uh, in asset management is maybe going over and looking at, um, you know, more of that exploded relational ship view, right? I mean, that's really a function of our discovery tools and a function of the atrium CMDB. And most of you who have seen me do other, uh, other demonstrations over the years, uh, you know, you generally say that. And, I, and you can leverage that from the incident module. You can leverage that from uh, any that you may have out there. But if I, uh, if I do that, I could go into any one of my, my services that I have over here. So let's go into where, um, uh, let's see, uh, who does that want to use here? Let's go into where um, Dialing Print, TechWorks Services. Let me scroll down here and get the one I need for you. If I go into my employee services, we talked about that, and I say here I want to explore that CI. Again, it's not that asset management is enabling this. You've got this capability anyway, but certainly while you were in asset management, you may, be, may want to be able to go out and have a, uh, have a view such as this. And this can be as detailed or as, uh, as expansive as you might need it to be. So if we uh, just expand that one out a little bit there, um, let's uh, – oops. This thing's always hard on my mouse here. A uh, little bit of a mouse problem this morning. Come on, come on. Yeah, let's expand that out. And you can get as uh, holistic a view as you need to have on everything that makes up that underlying infrastructure supporting that employee services application. There sets a uh, you know, number of servers that are got at here. Here's that Maybox server that we looked at, uh, we looked at in the detail. So again, not being enabled by, uh, by asset management, but certainly viewable uh, while you are in there. So if we uh, let's just clear that out and go back. So the, let's look at some of the other things that uh, that we talked about. You can do here. We talked about uh, looking at the inventory. We showed that. We talked about uh, you know the cost even within the form. We talked about the uh, the schedules that you can do. Let's actually go out and look at some of the other consoles that now become available to you. Specifically, let's go out and look at the software asset management console, which is going to give you that ability to help you come in and, and make sure you're in compliance. And, and as such, even under your KPIs here, it's going to graphically show you, uh, you know, certificate of compliance by status. Uh, let me see how I'm doing by manufacturer. Let me see how I'm doing uh, what I purchased versus what I've deployed. So the different license types, the license schema that we support in our software asset management console is per copy or per copy per device uh, or uh, uh, per CPU, per instance, per server. All of these types are defined within there. And if we just wanted to then go in and you know, look at different graphs and get different views there of how we're doing, you know, very easy to do it as well as just go in and give me the spread of my various software vendors and let me see how I'm doing. So some really good KPIs that they give to you there. But within, and th you know, these are all kind of part of the CMDB as well. It's just a different console view. So here you can see I'm looking at a list of uh, uh, software items that we have here. You'll notice I do have a couple of, of those here that are reflected in red, one of them being Visio. I can see here are all the software instances where they've been deployed on different. So that's a CI, that's a CI. They're all servers. That's where I have these deployed. But let's go in and, and uh, take a more of a detailed look at this and find out why this is, uh, why this is showing up in red here. So let me double click on that and get him open. And we'll, what we're going to see in there is that uh, we're, we're kind of out of compliance on this particular one. So let's open him up. We can see here that uh, it, it's a per copy instance there. It was for this group. Here was the, it, it was Microsoft. It was Microsoft Visio 2010. We purchased four, yet the last time we did an inventory discovery run, we found five which shows that uh, we're now out of compliance. Now, one could argue that, you know, if people had gone through proper change management, the likelihood of that happening would be less, but we all know in the real world things like that happen. So if I look at my compliance details here, 
we should have had a warning that this was possibly going to happen. We know we purchased four. We know based on the last run when we did our reconciliation job with the atrium CMDB after our last discovery run, we discovered that there were five. But, you know, someone was notified that we only have three copies left to deploy at some point in time, and another a notification went out when they only had two there. And, of course, you could set this up to be whatever numbers you wanted. But the bottom line here is at least we know we have, a, have an out-of-compliance condition, and we can remediate that quickly so that we don't get hit with a surprise audit. And this might also, quite honestly, be where you might want to go in and leverage your software usage to see if, hey, maybe instead of going out and deploying another, uh, uh, buying another license, why don't we go out there and kind of see, you know, what's available out there. So let's go out and see if there are a bunch of people that are running Microsoft uh, uh, Visio and maybe just haven't used it in a while. So, you know, one of the things you have is a complete product catalog of everything that you purchased and, and that the manufacturer's office here, uh, offer here. So if I go down and say I want to see all of my installed instances of Microsoft Visio and when was the, uh, the last time that uh, that was done, you know, here are my instances, how many times has that person on that machine accessed it in the last 30 days, 90 days, 180 days, and perhaps I have some underutilized licenses here that I could harvest, retrieve, redeploy to some other uh, area if I, uh, if I needed to do that. And we're kind of running out of time here, but the one other console I'll talk a little bit about, I've, I've mentioned it when I was in that Maybach thing, but you do get a contract management console which is where, out of the box, we have the ability to create contracts for life, leases, maintenance, uh, you know, master services agreement, the software license contracts, support contracts, warranty contracts. Uh, and then we obviously, if it's software, you can see here, here's some master contracts, leases. We have the ability to kind of set those up. And if you were going to do a new, you know, maintenance contract, for example, it just basically brings up the form. You fill it out, you know, what are the what companies it for, what division, what are the cost codes associated with it, what's the uh, length of the contract, the start date, the end date, when do you want to be notified that the contract's about to, uh, to expire and just running through there. So, again, it's this ability to do managing of the CI, including inventory and optionally purchasing and receiving. It's the ability to be able to track the details about all the cost associated with a particular asset. It's the ability to do software license compliance using that software uh, uh, asset management console and to kind of tie it all together from when did I procure it, what lease is it on, when does the lease have to be renewed, what are the supporting uh, maintenance and warranty contracts associated with it. It really makes for a very you know, well-diversified asset management system. Uh, you know, quite honestly, I could spend two or three hours getting into any of these details. And if, if this has sparked some interest on any of you out in the audience, let us know. We can talk in a little bit more detail of how does it, how does it uh, interoperate with the discovery tools to come back and show you those breach worries and kind of how does that work in a little bit more detail. We'd be more than happy to, uh, to cover that uh, for you there.